faith uh, must have a voice. Faith must have um, uh, some kind of a sound uh, that, that, that comes because uh, we know that all of the things that we see and know and that exist uh, came from a sound, okay? We know that God said, isn't that right? Let there be light, right? And he, and, and he said, he spoke everything into existence. And uh, so, uh, so the, the first thing is, uh, we, we know Pastor Mark uh, has said that the, the first thing that your faith should move um, is your mouth. That's where, that's where it begins, it, it is in your mouth, right? And uh, the great confession uh, that we know uh, is uh, from uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 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 woo, 10 and 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Isn't that right? Uh, so if, if we're going to increase our uh, ability to do the mountain moving, then we're going to have to increase in our speaking. Uh, uh, faith comes by hearing, uh, not by uh, just having heard. Oh, I've heard that before. Well, that's great, um, but you've also eaten before and you keep doing it. Isn't that right? And so we're going to have to do uh, our due diligence and begin to continue to speak. And uh, so, so again, uh, we know that, uh, that we got into this program uh, by speaking, uh, that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that you'd be saved. Uh, so Jesus is Lord is the beginning, uh, but it's not the end. It's, it's all in between. Do you understand? Uh, so we have to continue to speak, continue to talk and declare some things um, over our existence. And each of us have uh, a path to walk um, uh, that, that must include uh, your conversation. And uh, the reason why people uh, do vision boards is uh, because they're trying to keep before themselves uh, the thing that they're wanting to achieve and accomplish. And uh, so uh, in the area of healing, in the area of prosperity, uh, these are things that seem to be the most common. We just shared uh, from 3 John 2 uh, that, that uh, beloved, I wish above all things, we should be pray above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Well, this uh, development of your soul or prosperity of your soul uh, comes also by speaking. And uh, declaring some things. So we want to talk about uh, this, uh, this dynamic and uh, the, the good fight, if you will, of faith. And uh, so we're going to look at, uh, into Timothy really quick here and uh, see in our Bibles, uh, in uh, 1 Timothy 6.12, it says, fight the good fight of faith. Everybody say good fight. Good fight. So fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold... On eternal life, to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And uh, so we know that uh, Jesus is Lord is, is uh, the good confession. Isn't that right? And uh, as, as we've been encouraged is that you can just walk around during the day and just say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. If nothing else, just to irritate the devil. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just remind him about the knot on his head uh, that was given him 2,000 years ago. And, uh, and now we have the privilege of putting more knots on there um, uh, as needed. Yeah. And uh, whether it be demons and, you know, I like to think that, uh, that the devil, while he's trying to train his little imps and, and demons, uh, that, that he would come by your house and go, oh, don't go there. Don't go over there because see this one right here, this knot right here came from them, you know, and, uh, and so we, we have to fight the good fight. And uh, it's interesting what a good fight you try and explain to somebody, well, what's a good fight? Well, for us who are spectators, a good fight is, is when it's really evenly matched and they're really going at it and, and exchanging punches. Uh, but to, to the people in the fight, if you ask them what is a good fight, they would say, that's the fight I win. So the fighters would say a good fight is the one I've won. Isn't that right? And uh, I have, uh, in, in, in the past, I've been a wrestler. I was a wrestler in high school. And, uh, and uh, um, I've, I've actually won matches. And, and uh, you know, whether the 
uh, the ref puts your hand up, you know, indicating this is the winner, you know, and uh, I, somebody took a picture of one of those matches and it looked like I wasn't the winner. It looked like he was holding me up by my arm. And uh, so, so the spectators would have thought that was a good fight right there. Cause why? Cause they both got beat up and uh, uh, I've come home and my mom, she asked me, uh, did you lose? And I, I, I'd say, no, I won. And say, well, don't look like it. I mean, I've got matte burns on my face and, and uh, you know, I'm just looking rugged, not to mention, you know, because of having to suck weight, I look like a Cambodian poster child, you know, all, you know, inebriated. My, my face is, is just, oh, you know, sucked in. And, and it's interesting uh, when you talk about fighting a good fight of faith, uh, people have this really uh, interesting uh, mindset of what a, a good fight looks like, uh, but literally it is a fight. And uh, when you think about the, the battles of faith that, faith that you have fought in your life, how many of them that you came out the other side just all, you know, oh, I want to do that again. That was so awesome. It sounds really fun on the book, on the page, but when you, in reality, uh, fighting is, in a, it is a fight. And I don't know about you, but uh, if you've ever been in a situation where you feel like this might go south any second here and I might have to fight. Has anybody ever been there where your blood and your adrenaline starts getting up and you're thinking, I might have to actually get involved in something right here. You know, I know ladies, maybe you can't relate to this. Oh, really? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> We've had... Oh, it's funny to see that. The, I'm sorry. <laughs> when the ladies start removing their jewelry... They're all like, oh, all right, okay, all right. <laughs> We're done talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but when it comes to the good fight of faith, it's interesting because uh, oftentimes, uh, we have already gotten into the middle of a fight before we realize we're in a fight. I like what uh, a story that I, I believe Abraham Lincoln uh, tells about a friend of his who had a little dog that would just whip every single dog that it got in a fight with. And uh, apparently that dog was just mean, you know. And so, so somebody asked this gentleman, uh, how come your little dog wins fights against these big dogs? And he said, well, he said, the big dogs... They don't even hardly know they're in a fight till they're halfway into the fight. And he said, they don't get mad till halfway through, but he said, my dog just stays mad. <laughs> so, so sometimes, I mean, we shouldn't walk around mad, but we should recognize that we are in a war, we are in a fight, we are in a battle. And the enemy is consistently trying to move us out of our position. Do you understand? So we have a position uh, that we are to hold, that we are to stand in. And the scriptures say, having done all to stand, stand, therefore, right? And, and uh, we, we see how we're to stand, that we have these, this armor that we are to keep uh, ready and in position, right, uh, that, that Ephesians communicates about our helmet, our breastplate, isn't that right? Our, our shoes, our feet have armor, our, our loins are protected, right? The belt of truth, right? And so, so uh, we, we want to walk around in, in Speedos. Bunch of Christians running around looking crazy. But that's not how you prepare for a fight. Wouldn't that be interesting? You're in a battle. You're all hunkered down with your boys. And you're, you're, you're just, and all of a sudden, somebody's out in the middle of the field with Speedos. You're like, 
I mean, most people probably wouldn't even shoot him. You just look at him like, what? nobody informed them that they're in a war. And we don't even know by their dress which side they're on. We can't even tell by their uniform or lack thereof who they are fighting for. So we dare not shoot that stupid person because they are confused. We could be shooting one of our own. And so we have to prepare ourselves. We have to um, be a people uh, that know where we are to be located and that when we get there, that we know how to stay there, stand there, and to uh, maintain our position. Uh, in real estate, there's only three things that matter. Location, location, location. And when it comes to winning the battle that we are fighting, uh, it's only three things that matter. Location, location, location. Staying in a position of faith so that we can fight the good fight of faith. And then it would seem that the enemy is consistently trying to move you out of your position to take that land that you are to be standing in and to move you into a place of, of fruitlessness, of ineffectiveness, because he's trying to come against your life. And he does this in many different kinds of ways. Uh, because since faith works by love, guess where he comes after you in the area of your love walk? To get you outside of faith. Yeah, you can confess yourself into oblivion, but if you're not walking in love, your faith ain't working. When you're acting a mess towards your brothers and sisters. Oh, but I'm a word of faith person. Well, you better get yourself into being a love person because God is love. And to cooperate with God, you got to be like him. So the battle is, is real and the armor is necessary because the enemy will come against your mind. He will come against your body. He will come against your life in every different kind of way. So we take hold of the word of God, which, of course, is the, the sword and the shield of faith. So these are, are very important pieces of the armor. Because you have uh, defensive armor and you have offensive armor and your, your sword is, is offensive. Shield can be both defensive and offensive. You can use a shield to kill somebody who went down. You can use your shoes. They had spikes in their shoes. And when the soldiers would come through, they knew they have to get out of the way because they're all coming through like, and that is, is serious. So the illustration that we receive uh, from the Apostle Paul using that kind of illustration, this is, this is a, a fight, a real fight. And we know that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are, where are the strongholds in your mind? Again, there is a battle, a war. And so the helmet of salvation is keeping those uh, arrows and those darts from, from penetrating and having their effect against your mind. And so I'm going to have to start saying some things, even when it doesn't feel good. And you can imagine, you know, all the different uh, types of challenges a minister would have, you know, overseeing um, a flock. Uh, and when he is attacked, it is actually against the entire flock, because uh, the enemy would try and take him out. It says, when uh, you smite the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. And so, uh, hence why, uh, you know, we, we must lift up our pastors and leaders and people that are in the front lines that uh, first line of attack, the enemy would try and come against him. And if they can't be moved, then the devil will try and come on somebody under them that would cause them to be discouraged. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're talking about the location of faith and standing in that position and maintaining that position and having a strong stance. Not just, not just hanging out in the swing. 
but standing and more like having the mentality of your real estate and your property is more like um, a fort or a, a stronghold that you have, have built and held up so that you can perform those great things that God has for you to perform. Because there are enemies coming after you. And then uh, as people come into the kingdom and you are a person who are helping them, you bring people into your sphere of faith, um, into your fort, and you don't just stand for yourselves, you're standing for others as well. So I don't just use my faith for me, I use my faith for um, those, everyone that God would have me to use them for. And of course, that would be the church, you know, for sure. And uh, family members, you know, people in my influence and sphere. Uh, but man, we, we have uh, the ability to develop our faith where we can help entire countries uh, from this position right here. And I know people who God has put on their heart, the, the Muslims of the world and uh, people that are in Islam are caught into that uh, oppression. And uh, sometimes people will pray for a specific country or uh, a people group, if you will. But anyway, this is the fight of faith. And so, so Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And uh, so this basic a principle of believing that God really is interested in my better. He's interested in my well-being. <laughs> that you must believe this. First that he is, which is, if you're in church, you're probably one of them. You believe he is. That's easy for us, right? But has there ever been a time where you question? Does he really care? Is he really interested in my well-being? So we know those kind of doubts and those kind of attacks come from the enemy. To move you out of the position that God really wants to intervene. God really wants to bless you beyond your wildest imagination. And to walk in that kind of a belief and that kind of confidence that this thing that is coming against me cannot win because God loves me and cares about my best. Hallelujah. In the Living Bible, it says, You can never please God without faith, without depending on him. Anyone who wants to come to God must believe that there is a God and that he rewards those who sincerely look for him. And the word actually without, so it says without faith, uh, it actually uh, indicates uh, outside of faith. So without, uh, meaning you're not in, you're out. Again, so uh, faith is a location uh, that we are fighting to maintain in order that we may operate uh, in the way that God would have us to operate. In fact, anything not done in faith is, guess what? (laughs) A sin. And we don't perceive ourselves as sinners. You know, we believe that we are saved by grace, you know. And and, uh, I'm no longer, uh, you know, in the sinner category. I am uh, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, God's life is on the inside of me. Uh, But when you are walking in unbelief, not walking in faith, the Bible is clear. It says you are walking in sin. And the enemy wants to push you out of that real estate, that location uh, of which is the only location that you can please him. If you're going to obtain the promise and walk in the promise, then we have to uh, fight that fight to stay there in the midst of many difficulties. And in this, in this life, we, we are responsible ultimately for ourselves in the sense of um, our walk of faith, uh, but then we are also responsible for praying for others. But when you are uh, married, per se, just as an illustration, uh, what you, you can uh, do all the right things in your marriage, uh, but that uh, other person has to do that for themselves as well. So we walk in faith for ourselves and for our spouses and those around us, uh, but we can't control them necessarily, right? We found that out. Adam knew what to do. He didn't do the right thing. 
And all through the Old Testament, I'd probably edit the Old Testament if I was God. It's my book, my people. I would do different things. I'd say, oh, they were all great and they were all cool. But you're hard-pressed to find one in there. In fact, the only one I really, uh, the one person in the Old Testament is Joseph. That you, I feel like, man, I would have been the son of Joseph if I was Jesus, but he was the son of David. Because Joseph, you know, he was dropped in a pit. He was sold as a slave. He just remained steadfast. And many of us would have given up in the pit right from the beginning. <laughs> My relatives have just dropped me in a hole. They're going to kill me. Sold as a slave. Sold out by a hoochie mama. Went to prison because Potiphar's wife was trying to, you know, yeah. And he stayed true. Stayed true in the prison until he was the ruler. So to me, he's like, there's like one guy back there. Jesus comes and he says, I, I, I'm the son of David. I didn't say Joseph. <laughs> Mentioned somebody with a little better reputation. Because David was an adulterer and a murderer. But that brother knew how to repent, I'll tell you that, brother. <laughs> and we see the goodness and the grace of God in his, in his book, amen? That he loves his people. And so we uh, <laughs> see God's goodness. And that's what the whole Bible is, is really just a love story of God creating a, a man in his own image, in his own likeness, and has commanded us to act like he does. And so we want to walk in love if we want to see our uh, faith work and it, it having its it's, it's true work. We're going to have to stay in that position of that real estate, and that's a place of faith, that location. And when you wake up every morning, you want to make sure you relocate. You wake up in the morning, you make sure that you're standing in the right address. Because that's really what really matters. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. And whatever God's called you to do and commanded you to do, that you do it. Praise God. And we've had people that, you know, in the Bible, we look in the Bible, we see people that were part of uh, the kingdom, whether Old Testament or New, um, whether they're children of the covenant or children of the, you know, what we call the Old Covenant or the New Covenant, either way, um, that uh, there were children, they were part of it, but not everybody walked in obedience to it. And so aligning yourself with that covenant and, and speaking and declaring it um, and, and uh, checking your location, praise the Lord. Because we do knee-jerk things. Knee-jerk things. Soon as you hear a commercial about cold and flu, you immediately think, I need to get me some of this. Well, that's not the right location. Amen? As soon as the news says, oh, there's a new thing coming through. Well, you better check your location. What did that information do for you? You know, Elijah, Elijah kills all the prophets of Baal. And, uh, and then a woman says, I'm going to do to you the same thing you did to them. One woman. Beware of the one woman. And he runs off and he wants to commit suicide. Well, he got out of his location. He went from calling down fire from heaven to one voice, believing one voice. So I'm going to kill myself? Well, you big wimpy, what in the world? I'm telling you, we have to be mindful of our location. Anything can come and try and set you off, move you out, take you to a place where you're not supposed to be and expose you to the enemy standing in the middle of the field with your speedos because you got outside 
you got without. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You will not get anything done in Speedos. Outside of faith. You've dumped your armor. The helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. Your loins girt about with truth. Your feet shod with the preparation of the readiness of the gospel. The sword of the spirit and the shield of faith. Wherewith we quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. We live ready to, to destroy every argument, every reasoning, every high thought that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. The knowledge of, I am the redeemed of the Lord. I am a man or woman of God. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment I shall condemn. For this is the heritage of God. Woo! I'm a king's kid. Woo! Hallelujah! There is no scenario that the enemy can come up with that means I lose. Because why I am God's. I belong to him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Glory to God. Glory. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> so this particular scripture could be rendered. Um, when you live outside of faith, living beyond its boundaries and parameters, you make it impossible to please him. You make it impossible to please him. This is a, a rendering by uh, Rick uh, Renner, who wrote the, uh, the wonderful, amazing devotional uh, called uh, uh, sparkling. sparkling. I was right. What's the word? Sparkling, glorious, something. Gems. Sparkling gems. I encourage you to get that. If you're looking for a good read and for this coming year and a devotional, get sparkling gems if you don't have it. I believe there's a number two, so um, it, it'll be a blessing to your life. But he said this, and he translates this from uh, the Greek and uh, says it could be rendered this way. When you live outside of faith, living beyond its boundaries and parameters, you make it impossible to please him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we got to be people of faith. Are you worried about something? Ah, you've left your location. Do you have a great concern about something? You're stepping off the property. Hello? I don't know what's going to happen to my kids. Get back on the property. I don't know if my husband's going to leave me. Get back on the property. And let him go. I'm, tr I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be mean. He's not your God. Your children are not your God. If, those, if anybody on this planet gets you off of your property, they make you ineffective and they expose you to danger. You lay down your, your equipment, your sword, your shield. You take off your, your armor so that you can go worry about your kids. So that you can worry about your marriage. None of those are your God. You cannot make anyone else your God. Not your family members. I love my precious wife. I love my children. They are not my God. And if, if they all leave the program, it would hurt my heart. I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. It would be difficult, I would say, but that's when I get back into the fight and begin to stand for my wife and my kids. And so I get into a place of faith, not a place of fear. Children make choices. 
Spouses make choices. Not always the right choices, but it can't pull you out of your position. Circumstances of life come and they go. One of the most awesome scriptures in the Bible to me is, this too shall pass. <laughs> Anybody ever been in those circumstances of life? You're like, and that's all I got now right there, Lord. I'm just trusting your word. This too shall pass. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. In Romans 10, let's look at Romans chapter 10. In verse 14, I'm using the New King James. It says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we too have to ask ourselves, are we obeying God? Are we walking in uh, the, the light of his word? Are we doing the works that he's called us to do? We, we know uh, that Jonah was told to do some things that he didn't want to do, and that went kind of south, and he ended up in the belly of a fish, right? And uh, oftentimes we, we uh, know what God's word says about healing and, and about uh, you know, finances and things of those kind of attacks and our family members. Uh, but in the area of what God has called us to do individually, um, sometimes we leave that aside. Uh, that God's voice comes to us and uh, we, we feel like that's uh, too far beyond me or under me or whatever the case may be. Um, and then we don't do those things or we just don't want to. I've been um, asked by someone uh, to take a position before uh, that I absolutely did not want to take. I was like, no. And I, I didn't even want to ask God about it. I was afraid he would tell me to do it. I'm like, I'm not even going to talk to God. I mean, it was that bad. I was just not wanting to do the thing that that person asked me to do. And uh, they said, pray about it. And I was thinking, no, because I'm, th what if he says for me to do it? <laughs> so sometimes we think because we don't ask him or hear from him that that's okay. That is not okay. But it, it was, th that particular instance was interesting because finally I yielded myself and I was willing, um, as you will over and over again in your life, is die to yourself and do whatever the thing is that God would have you to do. It is the safest position to know his voice and what he has commanded and to get into that position. Because when you get outside of that place, that is not where God is going to protect and keep you. And so he'll move you as quick as he can into the position that he has for you. And so in that particular instance, I finally said, Lord, I'll do whatever it is you want. I'll, I'll do that. And the Lord said, I don't want you to do that. You, you don't? I was like, oh, man. Whoo. But now I can function from a place of faith and rightfully tell the person who asked me, I don't believe that the Lord wants me to do that. Not right now. Later, the same thing was asked. And I knew in my heart, it's time. And without even having to pray, I knew that God was directing me into it. Y'all with me? If you will follow peace and let peace be your umpire, you will always find yourself in a safe place, in the plan and the will of God, walking in faith, living in faith, standing in your position, glory to God, armored up, not in speedos, armored up, <laughs> amen, ready to fight whatever would come. Because you know that God has his hand on you and that he's working mightily in you. Glory to God. And so we have to declare some things. 
And one of the things that I have always liked to declare is that I am where God wants me to be. That God is always moving me into a position that he has prearranged for me to walk in. Ephesians 2.10, that we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. The Amplified says, taking paths that he prearranged for us to walk in. That I'm in the path. He's able to talk to me. A stranger's voice I will not follow, but my father's voice I know. And so I know that he's got my heart in his hand and he's turned it whichever he will. I know this is the place, this is the location of which I can win every battle, every fight would be a good fight because I'm fighting from the right location, a place of faith and confidence in him, knowing that he is a rewarder. Y'all with me? And so everybody can go crazy. That's not what I'm believing for. But I'm just saying, I am not moved by the surroundings or people or humans, people outside of myself. Even if they're beloved family members, I will not be shaken or moved out of my position or give up on God because family members did. Or because they acted crazy. I'm not going to start singing their songs. And, you know, hey, can you play another somebody done somebody wrong song? <laughs> that people sing about these things. People declare these things. Oh, my exes live in Texas. <laughs> Sing crazy song. You know, I can't get no satisfaction. And I try, and I try, and I try. I can't get no, and they scream about it. And wonder why they got problems. Is because you're declaring the thing, speaking the thing, talking about it. Everybody's got a little bit of wine with their cheese. Wah. We have to call a wambulance. So we have to shake this off. This should not be how we act. The, the people of God that fight to stay in our location a, a location a place of faith and confidence so that God can always have his way in our lives Amen